2023 Nissan Frontier SV year-long review, dude, where's my gas? Our Frontier falls victim to the crime of the decade, as in the 1970s. I wish I could have seen the look on my own face when I realized that all the gas I was pumping into our long-term Nissan Frontier was gushing out into a puddle at my feet. I should have been on alert. The Frontier usually goes at least 300 miles on a tank, and I knew something was up when the gas gauge was hovering over E after just 180 miles. A slow leak somewhere was a possibility rattling around in the back of my mind, but the emphasis was on slow. That, plus a killer case of jet lag, having just returned from driving the Ionic 5N in South Korea that morning, is probably why it took me a few seconds to register the waterfall sound and the smell of gasoline, then a couple more to register that both were coming from my truck. Talk about your WTF moments. What the hell had happened? Had I run over something that pierced the gas tank? Surely if that was the case I would have heard or felt it. A quick crawl under the frontier, after pulling it forward and out of the puddle of gasoline, that is, showed the bottom of the tank was clean and dry. I traced the fuel filler neck and found a rubber hose between the filler pipe and the tank, with a rectangular hole roughly hacked out of it. Well, there's your problem. Apparently, someone crawled under the truck, pierced the hose, and drained what they could out of the tank. Gas theft? Is that even a thing anymore? I thought siphoning tanks fell out of fashion after the oil crises in the 1970s, along with bell bottoms and super wide ties. Then again, bell bottoms are making a comeback again, aren't they? What does one do when one's gas has been stolen? Call up Nissan Roadside Assistance, get your car towed to a dealer, and call your insurance company. The good news is that such a theft is most likely covered under comprehensive insurance. We had the Frontier flatbed to Carson Nissan, which had to rush order the parts. Total for the new filler hose, its associated hardware, and shipping came to $95.58, plus $556.50 for labor. Why so much? Along with evaluation and installation, the system had to be EVAP tested. Like pretty much all new cars, the Frontier has a zero evaporative emission system, and I'm sure there's temptation to scoff at what this does to repair prices. Surprisingly, the theft hadn't triggered the system and illuminated the idiot light, on my old 93 Chevy pickup, replacing a hose in the fuel filler, if there even is one, would likely be a 20-minute job. But if you care about the environment, and I do, zero evap is useful. I read an interesting statistic many years ago when Nissan brought out its first car with a zero evaporative emissions fuel system, the 2000 Sentra Sulev. Thanks largely to the sealed fuel system, Nissan claimed that if you drove your Sentra Sulev 10 miles to work and then 10 miles home, it would pollute less than a car without zero evap, like my Chevy pickup, left sitting in the driveway all day with the engine off. Along with the $662.08 repair bill, I paid $26.80 for a lift ride home from the gas station. The Frontier was at the dealership for 8 days. Automakers that supply service loaners generally only do so for routine maintenance, warranty repairs, or recalls, so most owners would probably need a rental car. In my case, Nissan's PR folks loaned me a lovely Ultima SV, painted the same shade of blue as the Frontier, for the duration. How much of this would come out of an owner's pocket is down to the vagaries of their insurance policy. Moot point for us, Nissan technically owns our Frontier and covered the repair under its own insurance, but Motor Trend has a physical damage policy on the vehicles we own that would cover the repair with a $0 deductible, though the taxi ride and car rental would be out of pocket. What can we do to prevent this in the future? Not much. My guess is that whoever stole our gasoline knew this was a weakness to be exploited in the Frontier, and, I imagine, other pickup trucks. Eliminate rubber and the fuel filler neck? I'm not an engineer, but I figure there has to be some flexibility in the connection between the fuel port on the body and the tank, otherwise a side impact could result in a fuel leak. A truck isn't like a car, where such bits and pieces can be easily hidden under the bodywork. I guess it's just a hazard that pickup truck owners face, like stolen tailgates. I suppose I should be glad they didn't grab the catalytic converter while they were under there. Also that there were no nearby sources of ignition when I pumped two or three gallons of unleaded all over the asphalt, as my wife and dogs were sitting in the frontier at the time. 
Still, I take some solace in the fact that the thieves probably netted less than half a tank, which would be 10 gallons max, and not even the good stuff, because the Frontier runs on cheap 87 octane. Even at Los Angeles inflated gas prices, that's about $50, which doesn't seem like much of a lucrative haul for all the trouble it took. Let's hope the thief used that gas to drive to an interview for a real job.